Almost two years ago, I did a tour of our renovated kitchen and I showed you our temporary dining table. Last Christmas, we had friends from overseas coming to stay with us. So about two weeks beforehand, my wife told me, I mean, kindly asked me for a new dining table that would be big enough to seat all of us. I decided to make the table myself because A, we needed a specific size that would fit widthwise from the post here to the edge of the counter and then lengthwise to the edge of this post and getting a solid wood table custom made would have been really expensive and B, I wanted to make a table. In the end I was happy with the result but I made a lot of mistakes as you'll see in this video. I used mostly tools that I already owned which was a bit hit and miss. This is the first time for me to make a table like this so I've been watching videos on YouTube and looking up other online resources so it's a bit of a learning experience for me. I'm trying to do this without the typical tools that are used for making tables such as a planer and a jointer. The only tool that I really bought is a plunge saw and that's because I need it for an upcoming project but I thought it would be handy for this project so I decided to buy it now. I got the wood for the table over a year ago. That's how long I'd been putting this off for. It's Hinoki, which is Japanese cypress, uh, soft wood. Now I'd been sitting in the shed for quite a while and I don't think it was like this when I bought it, but some of the boards had twisted and most of them were slightly cupped. For those interested, one of these three meter boards at the time cost around 3000 yen, which is just over 20 US dollars. But since then, as I found out, as you'll see in this video, the prices have gone up a bit. The design and way of making this table was inspired, shall we say, by a video by Ishitani Furniture. I'll put the link in the description, so please check it out if you want to see a true master craftsman at work. Once I'd cut the boards down to roughly the right width, I needed to then flatten them. Because I don't have a thickness planer, I decided to use my router and a sled on rails to flatten the boards.
Because I don't have a jointer and my table saw is not exactly designed for fine woodworking, I found this technique on YouTube whereby you can use the track saw to joint boards like this. The idea is that you cut the individual boards as straight as possible and then clamp the edges together uh, making sure that you have no more than say a one millimeter gap. Then cut the two boards at the same time using the track saw. So any error in the cut is offset on each adjoining board and you should have a perfectly matching set of edges. So far so good, but on the very last side, this is where I start running into big problems. So I don't know exactly how it happened, but as I was cutting here, the router bit started slipping down and before I realized it, I'd cut way too deeply and the table was gonna to be too thin. I think what had happened was that I was getting a bit impatient and I was cutting too much all at once and I was putting just too much pressure on the, the router bit. So I'm pretty annoyed right now. I'll come back to this a bit later but for the time being, I decided to start working on the legs.
Coming back to the tabletop, I decided to buy some more wood, but the price had increased since I bought the original boards more than a year ago. So I decided to get cheaper boards. These ones have a few more knots in them, as I wasn't very confident at this point, and I didn't want to throw good money after bad. So after jointing the boards the same way as before, I gave them another go on the router sled. But the same thing happens. So at this point I feel like giving up, but decide just to keep going and I'll deal with that problem later. Fortunately it was just the underside of the table, so I decide to go ahead and joint the two large panels anyway using the same method as before. One of the main reasons that I haven't got a thickness planer is that here in Japan there's not much of a range and they're pretty expensive compared to the prices I've seen in places like the USA. But I'll definitely get one before I try making a table like this again. I figured there's not much I can really do to make the underside of the table look nice and to be honest, no one's really going to notice it or know about it, except for, you know, anyone watching this video. The main thing was to make it less conspicuous from the side view, so I just put these strips on and sanded them down. At this stage you might be wondering whether I actually managed to get the table finished by Christmas. Yeah, no. But you probably already guessed that by now. The main downside was that I had intended to attach the stretchers to the underside of the table using sliding dovetail joints, but because it was no longer flat, I couldn't really do that anymore. So I had to come up with another way to attach the stretchers that still allowed for expansion and contraction in the tabletop.
I realized here that this section would be bearing quite a lot of weight, so I decided to put in thicker dowels. Amazingly, and much to my surprise, I was able to get all of the threaded inserts in accurately and the frame screwed in perfectly, but it was all to no avail, as I'll show you in a little bit.
So here's where I discovered that I hadn't measured the legs 100% accurately, but my care factor is pretty low right now. So I just decided to use the old method of hammering it into place, but I had to re-drill the holes in the frame, which undid my work from before. While waiting for the paint to cure, I decided to clamp up the table to reduce any risk of warping after bringing it inside. By the way, I also made a matching bench. The video for that is up on the Tokyo Llama Plus channel if for some strange reason you want to watch some more. 